Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Joan, and welcome to Custody Matters Live. So today, my guest is Dawn in, uh, McCarty, and um, she is the first of a series of, uh, of guests who are adult children of parental alienation. So she was alienated from one of her parents, and uh, as a child, the goal it, in interviewing these different people who are adult children of parental alienation is to find out from that, per, that person's perspective, to find out what would have made a difference in your life. So welcome, Dawn. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Danica. I'm glad to be here. So, so Dawn, you are you're an adult child of parental alienation. Give us a little bit of a background. Um, and then ultimately, we want to know, we want to share with our viewers what would have made a difference for you okay so i was uh ab ab abducted by my mom when i was four years old and it, it was an overnight transition from one that world that i knew into a whole brand new world the brand new world incorporated a new step family that included a stepfather and a stepsister and life as i knew it vanished overnight and it was an adjustment that I don't think anybody realized that um, as we're going through life, we need to have assurances. We need security. Sorry, that I guess my computer system is going to talk loud. <laughs> um, we need to have that comfort. And small children especially, they rely on that security and safety of their parents. And the one parent that I knew really well just disappeared. And the parent that I'm with now is the one that had abandoned me before. So now I have a trust issue. I have a, a, an identity crisis basically is what came out of this because the world's just, it was my twilight zone where it just kind of uh, got really weird for, you, for me at a, such a young age. I see you have a question. Well, yeah, I was wanting to know what, how old were you when this happened? This, I was four before you were, you were very you know this is something that a lot of children whether they're a, a, um they're a child of divorce or um any of that they do have these instances where there's abandonment yes. so for instance just a well-meaning parent so they decide that they want to introduce their child to the um to their new relationship and then the relationship doesn't work out. So the child has already experienced one loss of their bio parent with, you know, both bio parents being together. So mm -hmm. they, they have a loss there. And then they have a loss when, you know, mom or dad get an, a, a, into relationship and that relationship doesn't work out. And then they have to experience subsequent losses. So I can sure there's like walls that just keep getting put up. Well, and my, my abandonment issues started at the age of two when, when my mom had, my mom was the one that had left both of us. She left me with my biological father and he was my sole caretaker for the next two years. Now these, these are not exact two years. I was probably two and a half ish. So we're not exactly sure of the dates, but somewhere in that time frame, he was my sole caretaker. I relied on him. He was the only one there since the day I was born until the day I was abducted. She had had left and then came back. So that abandonment started when she walked out on us. And then when she met her new husband, she decided that they wanted to create this family. She um, told him that she had a daughter, of course, but she was living with her father. So they, they arranged a full-fledged kidnapping instead of talking to my dad or, or trying to reach out to him or finding out anything, they just decided to do a full-fledged kidnapping and came down and, you know, that I think parts of that have been, been told before. But um, so now I'm in this world of um, a step family and not being accepted into the entire family. So I was in a really awkward position growing up. And then I had the the violent abuse also as well that was included in there. So, so was, was it a blended family? I mean, her boyfriend slash husband, he, was he, um, did it come with children? Yeah, he had an older daughter. She was six years older than me. 
and she did not like my mom or myself in being involved in her relationship because her mom ironically left her and her dad as well so she was having her own abandonment issues and didn't like the whole blended family piece and then all of a sudden this four-year-old shows up on her doorstep and starts calling her dad dad which i was forced to do i was i didn't have a choice i was forced into calling her dad dad and she did not like it so she she abused me for eight years violently so um in regards to your your dad your biological dad at what point were you able to reconnect with him and uh how long did were what was this what what was your feelings about him he was never allowed to uh, visit me he was cut completely out from the very early stages uh, right after the the abduction and once i was found so we did not see each other for 44 years it was 44 years later that I had finally found him. And one of the things, my mom never told me much about him. I had one picture of him that had, a, it was a profile picture of him. So I really didn't get a good look at him, but she didn't give me any other details other than what was on my birth certificate. And one day she finally gave me the exact date he was born. Cause on my certificate, it only had their birth year. It didn't have their birth date. So he had a very common name. So I, once I finally started finding people with that birth date and was able to narrow it down, it made it a lot easier for me to locate him. He had been looking for me. My brothers that I didn't know about yet were looking for me, trying to help them, you know, help their father heal and find their sister and his daughter that, you know, they, they grew up knowing everything about me as much as they could, of course. Um, wow. So, yeah, I mean, when I finally found him, um, it was on Facebook, actually. So social media played a part in this. Um, this. It allowed me to locate him. And without that, I don't know that I would have ever found him. Yeah, so social media is not all bad. <laughs> it is not all bad. It can be used for good things. However, I will say, I did find a lot of ancestral information on Facebook that I probably shouldn't have been able to. Just FYI for all you relatives out there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I know it. Um, well, okay. So were you, was there a time, did, were there years where you felt like, like anger towards your dad or, um, you know, like, the, and was your mom actively trying to alienate you from your dad? She would constantly, well, first of all, she constantly reminded me that he is not your dad. He is. And she would always point to my stepfather. That's not your dad. He's your dad. And that he had nothing to do with me. He would, she would tell me things that were scary about him, that he, people wanted to kill him, that he was dangerous, that, you know, he, he cheated on her, uh, all kinds of horrible things that, you know, I found out later that weren't true, that there's some other things that were omitted. Um, I don't know if conveniently, maybe she forgot those pieces. I'm not sure, but um, she one time told me that if I was ever going to find him, that I should take someone with me for a bodyguard or, um, carry a gun because I wow. should be very cautious at approaching him because he could be that dangerous. It's kind of sad because I get that a lot of times, you know, there is domestic violence in a couple relationship and I get but, a, but it's so very important that just because there's domestic violence with the couples does not mean that the children are going to be abused. It's a right. different dynamic. And a lot of times people just kind of like, they collapse the two thoughts. Um, and they're also, because they were afraid of their uh, ex, they feel that it's a responsibility to protect the children as if yeah. the children are, um, and children are vulnerable, but it doesn't mean that um, they're going to go after uh, the child in this, you know, in the same dynamic. Yeah. And, and the uh, interesting piece of this though, um, is the twist is he wasn't the abuser. She was. Mm -hmm. So she even told me parts of stories that kind of validated it without her ever really admitting it. But she told me herself that she grabbed the ax off the wall and swung it at him that she, mm -hmm. she did these things that 
you know, so when then when talking to him and knowing everybody that knows him, he was never violent ever. He didn't have the friends that she said that it, he had. He was never friends with the Hells Angels like she claimed that he was. And they, he says, I didn't know him well enough for them to want to kill me. So I don't know where that came from. So a lot of things that come out of it makes you think as the child, you know, maybe I should be scared. But deep down inside, some of us have that feeling of that intuition or that gut feeling that I don't know, something's just not right. And I, maybe I don't believe all of this but I'm still scared enough to take extra precautions and be very extra careful. And it, it creates that wedge. So when you do reunite, there's no instant bond. You have to build a trust into it. So it takes more time to undo that. Well, it's, you know, it's controlling the narrative. Um, yeah. and, it, and it has me wonder, you know, a toxic narcissist, and I, I specifically say a toxic narcissist, a malignant narcissist, is quite different from a, from a narcissist because, be, to be honest, all children come into this world as narcissists. That's yeah. their survival mechanism so that they have... They all um, start off that way. They're all, they're all start, they all start off, me, 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 burp me, play with me, hold me. Right. <laughs> So the toxic narcissist, they, they have the wherewithal and, and let's go, you know, whether they're sociopathic or whatever, like they have the wherewithal to know what's good and proper um, and what, pe how people are going to receive information. So you can't, they, it's not like they're unaware of their behaviors and actions. So to, to shift the facts, to switch the narrative around means that they do know what they're talking about. They do know what the truth really is. Yeah, yeah, and I have uncovered things too, and we, I won't get into that because it would take a lot longer to go through all the scenarios, but you do learn as, as you reunite and as you start going through and asking questions when the, when the child's ready, that you can put the pieces together and you can figure out a little bit about each person and then decide for yourself. And that's the beauty of children reconnecting with their other parent, regardless of how they feel, they really need to give themselves that opportunity because there's answers that can't be answered without that person's involvement. Yeah. And what I want to do, cause we're, um, we have about, I don't know, about 15 minutes left. I wanted to talk about, um, so our viewers, most of our viewers are uh, targeted parents uh, or grandparents that are seeking answers. What can I do? My child is uh, a teenager and is totally enrolled in this um, story that I'm this evil person. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them are afraid. A lot of them come to me, they're like, well, I don't want to be too bold because this may be the only shot I have to to say something but if it's if it cuts to the heart too quickly they may lose their opportunity to have a relationship with that person yep. until a few years down the road that's true what would have made a difference for what would have made a difference for you um i don't know to, to be able to add, i know it wasn't uh, it was not quite this the situation i guess none of them are all like normal like or you know standard arrangements but what would have made a difference? Well, I see parents talking every day and I see how some parents have grown from an original position that I first walked in, you know, that I first witnessed. So it was going on before that, but when I first knew them and so I see them transition through their journey, some of them are growing and learning and reaching a better place. And then some of them aren't. So we have um, different levels that really need to be addressed here because some parents are in a different place than others. So you can't, I can't just say, this is what you need to do because there's so many differences in the stories. But what I do see is that every single parent out there has to accept change. Change happened and the whole situation has changed. Your child has changed because of what they may have to have gone, go, what they may be going through, what they had to go through, what they had to do to survive. And sometimes that bitterness that they have is 
because they're mad at the whole situation. They may not just be mad at the parent or you specifically, they're mad at everything. And sometimes they're not allowed to be mad, but we have to allow them to be mad. It's okay for them to be mad. And sometimes they may want to reach out to the targeted parent or the chosen parent or whichever, you know, you want to call that, but they know that they can't because it's going to make life worse at home. So I think the, sometimes the best thing that that parent can do if they do have that communication established, even though it might not be very frequent, but they may need to let them know, listen, I know that you love me and I know you know that I love you and I would do anything for you and I want your life to be easy. So this is what I think that parents should sh suggest. It's okay if you have to put your guard up. It's okay if you have to not talk about the kind of fun things that you've had while we're together. It's okay if you just ignore me when you're in that situation so that they're comfortable knowing that they can come back to you. Now, again, there's levels. This doesn't apply to everybody. So um, I think- yeah, I, I've, I've had parents that are just that, you've got their teenage child is interrogating them. Yeah. Why haven't you done this? And why haven't you done that? So when a person asks you a question, it's just you're compelled to want to come up with an answer that has you defend yourself. However, well, what that's they're the looking wrong thing for, to do. Yeah. They're looking for the reason that they can just say that parent's right and they can now write you off because it makes their life easier. And I think the best way to respond to the child in any condition is with that unconditional positive regard towards them and their other parent. Never speak ill of that other parent, regardless of what your feelings are, regardless of the bitterness that you may carry. The child cannot hold that burden at all. And yeah. if they're punching at you like that, they're looking for an excuse to walk away. The best thing for you to do is just say, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. And let them know that no matter what they say, that you still love them. However, that does not mean that you should be abused by them. Right. I mean, um, it's a difficult thing to know when... It's, it's the right time to be straight with them, mm -hmm. which may put uh, your relationship at risk or at least right. put a roadblock in the middle of your relationship. It's a tough thing um, to be hammered with these accusations and stuff like that. And you're supposed to defend them, but, but defending, um, defending and debating, trust me, the person who's coming to interrogate you is coming with all their weapons drawn. Mm -hmm. um, so you really can't win by using the, the defending. Well, you never know the weapon of choice either. So that, that makes it really hard to defend. But I think that in some of, the, I've talked to a couple parents recently, and I think that no matter what you do, you gotta defuse the argument somehow. Mm -hmm. And because every circumstance is different, I'm not sure how each one needs to be diffused, but you have to become the master at diffusing. You have to be the master at um, calming the situation and making your child feel safe. And I've told someone that lit recently that you need to stand your ground. You are their parent, period. They don't get to decide that you're not. Nobody does. So I think that um, when you establish the good, because I tell you, it's not easy when uh, you're painted out to be the bad guy, but it is right. Stand your ground. I like that because that doesn't ground. have to, that doesn't need, again, that goes back to not, uh, you know, being committed. You're being committed, but not happen. defensive. You're not defending yourself. You're, you're standing your ground. I am this person. I'm not going to back down. I will sacrifice anything for you, but I will not sacrifice you not having me in your life because that child has the right to have both parents in their lives. So you can sacrifice a lot, but not when it comes to what it would be sacrificing on their, on their end. So yeah. by sacrificing a parent, that's not fair to them. So, I mean, 
it's so hard to to know exactly the right thing, but I do know that for my for my situation, my dad, I don't know how he knew, but he just knew that you he, he just needed to listen. He needed to he needed to just be there and let me be. Let me learn who he is again. And he needed to learn who I was again. He had no idea what I was about because 44 years, I'm, I'm a whole person. That's, it's a complete stranger. And we're building a relationship based on strangers. We're not picking up where we left off. And that's another thing too. You cannot pick up where you left off, unfortunately. You've been robbed of that time. The child's been robbed of that time with you. That is the, the worst part of all of this. But you have to start at a place where you can meet them uh, as equals on a level playing field and build your future and never look back. When the child starts asking you questions, that's when you can talk about it. But only answer the question that you've been asked. Don't elaborate. Don't go. If they ask you, did this happen? Say yes. Don't say but. Let them ask you, well, what happened? Let them guide you through what they're, what they're ready to hear. That is that's so good because I get that a but negates everything you said ahead of time. Yep. You say, uh, yes, I left your mom, but blah, 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 blah. No, like if they ask you, did you leave my mom? Yes. Yep. Then here's here's an analogy. It, you're the parent, you've, you're holding onto a piece of a rope. And your child's at the other end, but he can't reach the rope. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get the rope to your child. When you say, but you're trying to push a rope mm -hmm. and the rope is not going anywhere near that child. You cannot push a rope. You cannot force this. You have to allow the child to come and pick up the rope themselves. Right. It's yeah. Anything after the butt is defending yourself again. And it's, yeah. And I know you want to, I mean, we're, we, we always want to defend ourselves, right? <laughs> What's your whole story told? You want to be heard holy, you know? You want to, you want to, them to know that, hey, it was never about you. I, go, I totally get that. And I know it's such a difficult position to be in. I can't imagine. Was there a time that. when you felt like, why does my dad not love me? He's not, he's oh, not yeah. helping to find me. I, I felt abandoned by him. So I was abandoned earlier on and then I felt yeah. abandoned growing up. And then even as an adult, I was, ab I felt abandoned on my wedding day. I felt abandoned when my kids were born. You know, it was a constant reminder that he's not here and he's the one that should be. So That's where right. is he? He does not love me if he's not here. Yeah. yeah. So it does make you question and doubt, but, um, I was just going to say something about that too, where but they, they also, the kids, sometimes they like to test, test how much the, the parent loves them. Like they give them a hard time and they're like, I, why do you come to my baseball games? I don't want you to be here. And um, well, think about it as a, when you're in high school and you have friends and your friends were testing how, how, how much of a friend are you or how much do you love me? They're doing the exact same thing. Cause that's mm -hmm. what they know. Now you're the adult though. Yeah. So it, it kind of has to play out where we're not, we're not engaging in the high school portion mm -hmm. of their, um, I don't want to say immaturity, but in a way that's, they just haven't developed beyond that yet. That's, that's the place where they should be doing that. Yeah. So, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it's hard to, to want to, because you've got, when you've got a targeted parent, you just want a chance to be, you know, to at a at a, a relationship with them. And there is a lot of grief, a lot of a grief, grieving process of you know, wishing, be, feeling like you've been robbed of of something, and you have. But also, it's there's it's important to forgive. Um, Deepak Chopra says that forgiveness is giving up that it could, that the past could have been any different. Um, because yeah, yeah. the yeah. past is what makes you who you are. When I think, I like that when you said robbed, this is something that I've used a couple of times where I felt I've, I've been robbed my whole life. And, you know, my dad was robbed as well. 
of a lifetime of watching me grow up. My brothers were robbed of a sister and that <clears throat> when we're adolescents, when we're growing up that robbed feeling, you know, I think about it when, when you're, when you were younger, we wanted more justice in, in a different way. We wanted to right that wrong. Oh, you robbed me. Oh, you hurt me. I'm, and this is what I want to, I want to attack that. I want to fix that. Right. So children push those boundaries. They start testing those borders and finding out what's going to push your buttons. It's in their nature to do that. So when they're doing that with the adults, um, I think that it might, on some, in some cases, not all, in some cases, the adult has to outsmart them. Well, that is in all cases. You have to outsmart what they're attempting to do without putting the label on there that they just hate me, that they just don't love me anymore. Because that's not what it is. They mm -hmm. are, they're acting out. They're expressing their anger of being robbed. They're expressing those emotions that they do not understand or know how to deal with. And I think when parents can understand their children's point of view, then think about how can I help them through that? How can I alleviate that pain or that anger? How can I make sure they don't feel robbed? That's right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, you joining us. Um, I know there are viewers, uh, you know, are going to get so much out of this series of uh, adult uh, children of parental alienation because that's what we're all looking for. We're looking for hope. Yeah, and this was just one, one idea, one aspect at this point in time. So as you go through and you inter interview others, the, you know, there will be other ideas that come through other suggestions that will resonate because not everything I say will work for everybody. Not everything anybody else says will work for everybody because it's all individual and it, it, you can take pieces of each thing and figure out how to make it work for you. That's right. But be positive and move forward. Look at the change as your blessing and your, on your future with your child. That's right and count every blessing. Be yes. grateful for everything you possibly can. Um, and it certainly makes things easier. Um, and reduce that in, emphaticism. Is that what it's, is that, do I, is that a word, emphaticism? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't be too emphatic on things. <laughs> Just be yeah. gentle and be kind and firm. That's right. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining us on Custody Matters Live this evening. I hope you have a great evening and a great week and for you to join us again next week on Custody Matters Live. Good night. Good night.